Hey everybody, it's Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Subaru WRX. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. The cross tube is going to be visible, it's going to hang down right below the bumper, and the receiver tube is going to be pretty close to being flush with the back bumper. Now it is a class one, which means it's gonna give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And it's gonna be great for light duty towing, maybe putting a bike rack or a small cargo carrier in there. But regardless of how we're gonna use our hitch, all of our accessories are gonna mount through the hitch pin hole here on the side. Now the hitch is gonna accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these don't come with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to keep your accessories secure and anti-rattle devices to cut down on the annoying rattling sound coming from the back of the car. Now if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, you need a spot to hook up your safety chains. And here we have a plate style. You can see the openings on the bottom of the receiver tube here. If you have some normal size hooks, we'll have plenty of room to get those hooked on or take them off. And even with the large oversized hooks, shouldn't have any trouble hooking them on or taking them off or worry about any kind of interference. Now speaking of towing, if you do plan on doing some towing, keep in mind that our Kurt hitch here does have a few specific drawbars that are made for this hitch. Now they are going to be sold separately, but again, you can find it here at eTrailer.com. So well, that brings us to our next point. If you plan on towing, using a bike rack, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that the hitch is going to be up to the task that you put it to. And our hitch is going to have a 200 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. It's also going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's how much the hitch can pull, but that does include the trailer and the load that we have on it. Now with those numbers in mind, you always want to double check your WRX's owner's manual because again, those are the ratings for the hitch and we don't want to exceed the manufacturer's rating for the car. I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you when you're looking for accessories for your new hitch. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about three inches. Now that measurement is going to help with you when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room to put them in the upright stored position and not make contact with the rear bumper. Now from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is going to be right about 11 inches. Now at that height, I definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier to help out with some ground clearance since our WRX already sits so low to the ground. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the installation process together. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our WRX and we're going to come to the side and on each side we're going to have these plastic panels that are going to have to come down. Now we're going to have several fasteners around the outside edge as well as on the inside right by the muffler and on the back side right behind the tire. But they're all going to be the same style of fastener. Be a little push pin. What we want to do is take a flat blade screwdriver or a trim panel tool. We want to come around the notches to the center section. And we want to pull out that center section first, kind of get it to come out. Now it will loosen up the tension and we should be able to pull the rest of the clip out once the tension is released. So we're going to work our way across and pull the rest of the push pins out. Now these push pins that are going to be on the outside of the muffler, these are going to be a little tricky because you can see these are actually coming from the outside going in, but the same concept is still going to apply. We want to push the center section out. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver and push in on the center and that will allow us to take that tension off the push pin and if we push on it at the same time, possibly even pry between the two sections, we should be able to get it to come loose. It's really just going to be a matter of pushing that push pin out rather than prying on it. I'm going to do the same thing for this one over here. Make sure that it separates. Once we get those loose and the other ones are loose, kind of work that panel down and pull it out. Just want to make sure you grab the push pins and hold on to them because these panels are going to go back in place. Now we also need to lower our exhaust down so we can get to access to above the muffler. But before you lower it, you want to make sure that you put some kind of support underneath it so it doesn't come down too far. I'm going to use a strap, but you can use a jack stand or really just about whatever to keep it coming down too far. Find a 
solid point to connect to on each side. Then I'm going to tighten it up to where there's just a little bit of tension right here. Now we can move back towards the mufflers and on each end you'll find one hanger right in the middle. And the easiest way to get these off is we'll just take some spray lubricant and then we can slide that isolator right off. I'm just going to take a pry bar and I'm going to use the muffler to kind of pry against until I can get that isolator to come off one of the posts. It really doesn't matter which one just so long as it becomes disconnected. Now if we move to the outside of the muffler, at the back of it, we're going to have another isolator. So we'll do the same thing, just this is going to be a little bit more tricky to try to figure something to pry on. But again, the main goal here is just to get that rubber isolator off of one of the posts. But if it comes off both, it's not a big deal. We just want to make sure that the exhaust can come down. So we have one side of the muffler down. We're gonna to move to the other side and we're gonna have the hangers in the same location. So just put a little bit of spray lubricant on there. And pull those isolators down as well. Now if we follow our exhaust right past our rear axle, we're gonna find another isolator. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one just so we can have a little bit more room. But again, you wanna make sure that, that strap or some kind of support is holding the exhaust because we really don't have much support until we go much farther up in the system. This one will be a little bit easier to get off. You can use the actual exhaust pipe itself to pry against and slide that isolator off. At this point we can very slowly lower the strap so we can have a little bit more room above each one of the mufflers. Now above each one of the mufflers we'll have our heat shield. It's going to be held on by four bolts. We need to pull the heat shield down, so we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and pull all four of those bolts out. And we can go ahead and set our heat shields aside. I do want to mention, if you pay close attention to them, they are labeled. The right side or the passenger side will have an R and the driver's side or left side will have an L on it. So if you pay close attention, you should be able to keep track of them and not have to worry about mixing them up. Now above the heat shield on the bottom of our frame rail, we're gonna have four plastic rubber or plastic caps. I'm gonna pull those out. You just take a screwdriver, kind of pry on them, they'll come right out. Once we get these out, we'll go over to the driver's side frame rail and pull the four caps out of that side as well. Now the hole that's furthest towards the front of our WRX, the one's going to be right by that seam, that's going to be our access hole. Now if we move forward, the next hole towards the back will be one of our mounting locations. We'll skip one, and then the one at the very back towards the bumper will be another mounting location. So we need to get some hardware in these two holes. We'll use our access hole to get it through, but as you can see, our hardware is gonna be just a little bit too big to fit inside the frame rail. So we need to enlarge this hole just so we can get the hardware in place. Now you can use a file, a drill bit, rotary tool, just about whatever you have to enlarge this, but you do just wanna make it big enough to get the hardware in. So I suggest periodically stopping, taking your hardware and checking to see if it fits. I'm going to use a step bit just to make a nice clean round hole and hopefully take a little bit of time to do it. And again, just periodically check and continue to enlarge that until you can get your hardware in place. Now that we have this excess hole enlarged, we'll move to the other side of the frame and do the same thing. Now it's never a good idea to leave exposed metal on your vehicle, so I'm going to take a little bit of spray paint and just cover up the area that we drilled, hopefully preventing any kind of corrosion. And I suggest doing that anytime you have exposed metal, especially on the frame, just come back up, come back and touch it up with some spray paint. In order to get our hardware in place, we're going to grab our fish wire. We'll take the coiled end. I'm going to start at the furthest back hole just because then I don't have to fight the other hardware when I start pulling it through. We'll take our coiled end, we'll feed it into 
the mounting hardware location. Then we want to feed it back towards the access hole until we can have it come out. Now it's important that we leave the tail sticking out of the frame as well as the coiled end. So I like to put a little bend here, kind of helps prevent it from getting sucked into the frame. So we can take a square hole spacer block, we'll slide it over the coiled end of the wire, and then we'll thread a carriage bolt onto the end of the wire. And then one piece at a time, we want to push the hardware into the frame. And again, make sure you have a hold of that tail of the wire so it doesn't go back in. Then we'll pull on it. Kind of have to work it until that bolt drops through the block and down through the frame. Now it's gonna be the same combination of hardware and technique to get our other piece of hardware in this hole and the two on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now on our heat shield, I went ahead and made a mark just to kind of point out where we're gonna to have to drill a hole. But if you look by the marking of the letter, whether it's the R or the L, you'll see there's kind of a dimple right there. If I rub it, clean it off a little bit, there's a small dimple. And if you flip it over to the other side, you can see it really well, kind of goes down. That spot right there is where we want to drill our hole or the center of the hole to be. Now we need to drill a one inch hole. So I'm gonna use a one inch hole saw just to make it pretty quick but you can use just a drill bit and then trim it out with whatever you have. We just need to make an access hole for that bolt to come through so we can put our heat shields back in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out and we're gonna do the same thing on both of the heat shields. Now I will say the heat shield is very thin metal so you don't wanna to push too much because it's just gonna end up bending it but you just wanna do a high speed and a low pressure and it should cut right through it. And with that one cut, again, we're gonna move over to the other side and trim that heat shield as well. I'm gonna go ahead and remount the heat shield now. One thing I do wanna mention is since we have our pull wires attached, you want to leave those on the bolts until we have the hitch in place because it'll prevent the bolts from getting pushed back in the frame. So we wanna make sure we feed the pull wire through the heat shield and we slide the heat shield back up, line up the mounting holes, Except this time, we're only gonna use three bolts to remount it. We're gonna leave out the mounting bolt between the two carriage bolts coming through the frame because our hitch is gonna be here and we don't want the head of the bolt to interfere. So we'll just replace three of the bolts, tighten them down, and move to the other side and repeat the process. Now at this point, I recommend getting an extra set of hands to help you lift your hitch up. But we're gonna take our pull wires we want to make sure we feed them from the top of the hitch going down. And depending on how low you got your exhaust, you may kind of have to come in at an angle to get past the mufflers on one side and then kind of swing it in from the other side. So once you have it in place, you're going to lift it up where the bolts come down through the hitch. We want to remove one of the pull wires. We'll grab a flange nut. And you want to get at least one nut on each side. That way the hitch will hold itself up. And we can worry about getting the rest of the hardware in. You do want to be extremely careful not to push those bolts back in because it will be very difficult to get them to come back out. Once you have all the hardware in place, you wanna grab a three quarter inch socket. You wanna grab a three quarter inch socket and come back and snug up all the flange nuts. I'm gonna come back with a torque wrench now and I'm gonna to torque all the hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. And then be sure to go back and repeat that for all of our remaining hardware. At this point, we can raise our exhaust back up and start putting those panels back in. So for our exhaust, I like to spray the rubber isolators down, especially if they came off. If they didn't come off, it might be a little bit easier to go ahead and remove them. 
but I'd like to get the ice layer just started on the muffler side first because if you look up we do have a small notch here to where that isolator can fit in so that way when we lift it up we can just slide it back and hopefully it'll catch right here can only spray a little bit of lubricant on the hanger as well and i'll go ahead and get the other side ready so when we lift it up it'll go up at the same time and for the one by the axle Usually at this point, the exhaust is already pressing upward because it's hooked at the back. So you just kind of bend that rubber isolator back, hook it around the hanger, and we can loosen the strap and pull it down. The isolators on the outside need to go back as well. And again, since the exhaust is already partially up, it'll be a little bit easier. You just want to go ahead and be extremely liberal with the spray lubricant and make it a lot easier to go back in place. And when you're going to put these panels back in place, what I like to do is loosely put it in there, and then I pull down on this section of the panel since these push pins need to come from the outside going in, and it's going to be nearly impossible to get this for forward one in. Fortunately enough, we do have a small gap towards the back one, and we should be able to sneak our hand in there. I like to get that push pin started through one panel push it through the next and get everything in place now when you're putting the push pins back you do need to leave that center section out and when you push it in it's going to lock it down so you need to make sure it's all the way seated before you push that center section in but once you have all those fasteners back in place that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Kurt class one custom fit trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 subaru wrx